Hi everybody, it's Gene Simmons, and you're not, and you're listening to the Potter Than Hell podcast with Steve, BC, BB, and Dylan. But you knew that, didn't you? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is your last stop on the crazy train of hard rock and heavy metal. So sit back, buckle in, and hang on. Here we go. Hello, Potter Than Hellions. Welcome back to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is Steve, your host, and I am joined tonight by... Dylan. And our friend... Brad from the Slam Fest podcast. There we go. All right, Brad from the great American Midwest out there in Michigan. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm good, Dylan and Steve. Thanks for having me on again. No, great to have you, Brad. And as you can probably tell by the sound of my voice, I am wound the fuck up tonight. So... uh <laughs> Just uh, be, pre- for sound. be prepared. Yeah, it was a uh, kind of a odd day, but I'm like totally wound the fuck up. Dylan, how are you? Not too bad. Did some work today. <laughs> that was basically it. So I'm uh, just cruising, moving right along, as the Muppets said. I like your Night Ranger shirt. Thank you. Thank Is that you. my Night Ranger shirt? No, it's one you bought me. Oh, okay. But All right. <laughs> I just wondered. Brad, what, are you wearing a concert shirt today, Brad? I, uh, you know what, I, yeah, I always, I always wear one for the uh, recordings of uh, of the podcast that I that I do, and obviously the the ones that I'm on. So I'm wearing a rock and roll over shirt. Actually. Oh, cool, nice. Cool. And I am wearing my still my uniform shirt because I just got home from work. It's so got the carbon daily, and I, I did, I did put sweatpants on, but I, I do have my uh, fire department shirt on. Yeah, and we have a uh, Brad. I don't know if you know our our. Our county has a number system for each town is a station number, and ours is 51. And if you look up Carbondale, Pennsylvania, we had a UFO incident in 1974. So our, like, mascot little guy is, like, an alien with a fire helmet on. Oh, nice. And they call him Carbon D Alien. <laughs> so <laughs> he's on my shirt. So that's, I got Carbon D Alien on tonight. So, uh, Brad, um, how's things at Slamfest over there? How's things going, buddy? Slam Fest is going going great. So by the time this airs, I think I'll have uh, episode 173 out. I was just telling these guys uh, before we hit record, I have a busy week this week. Had uh, Tony Masalem uh, from the band Restrained on. We talked about a Doc and Night Ranger rat show that I saw in 09. And then I had Sonny Pooney on as well. And we talked about me seeing Huey Lewis in the news. So I went off... Uh, out of format a little bit with that one, but good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, Huey's great. I love Huey. Lose oh, Lose. God. Lose love Lose. Huey. Yeah. Great. So yeah. good. And um, what do you got going, Dylan, besides work? Nothing? Come on. No, you gotta do nothing something. really. Uh, oh, I mean, you know, October's coming up, so we're getting ready. Uh, we have a big list of horror movies that Christine and I are going to be watching throughout the month, so that's fun at least. Are you going to watch any of the Hammer nice. films? Uh, yeah, that they might pop up. Uh, maybe I have a uh, bunch on DVD. Maybe a little bit of Taste the Blood of Dracula, a little Christopher Lee action with those ones are Peter good. Cushing as Van Helsing. Van Helsing, I like them. Yeah, and and this is actually the first episode that I'm recording for this podcast since I got back from our cruise. We went on. My wife and I went on a cruise with Sonny Pooney and his lovely wife Nicole and Stephen Michael and his lovely wife Jen, and we had an awesome time. Seven day cruise. We had an absolute, absolute marathon session trying to get home on the last day of the cruise. It was just short of 15 hours to get from Miami to Pennsylvania, which was just sucked ass. But we, everybody made it home safe, so we're good to go. So, all right. Let me see. What else? BC is on assignment tonight. BB is working. He was my relief when I just came from work so that's where those guys are tonight so what are we listening to brad what do you got going yeah so other than you know listening to stuff for the for the podcast so have you guys heard of the band station i've heard the name yeah so they're a new york city band and i think i heard them originally on growing up rock i think uh i think those guys interviewed and maybe it was just steven interviewed a couple of the guys from the band and and they played some songs and and great stuff but they got a new album coming out middle of october called and the time goes on and they've released three tracks already and it sounds great again it's melodic 
hard rock. I, I feel like the the guitar work, you know, it's kind of a cross between White Lion and and uh, maybe some Van Halen in there as well. But great stuff. And then, the, have you guys heard the new Dawkins songs? I heard one of them. Yeah, I didn't mind so it. I thought it was a, okay. They've got an album coming out. I don't think there's a date. At least I haven't seen a release date for it called heaven comes down is the name of the album which is which is interesting that that's mm-hmm. what it's called uh fugitive and gypsy are the two songs that they've released and so far so good i like what i hear from from both of those so anyway here in uh getting ready for some new stuff from uh an old kind of legacy band and and then a more recent band all right cool yeah i heard the one uh the fugitive song and i didn't mind it I thought yeah. the uh, you know the playing was was done well and the good, the solo was really good. They did yep. some obvious um, <laughs> and some magic wi- wizard wizardry yeah. in the vocal department, but uh, you can they still did. tell us Don Dawkins singing though. Yep. yep. So we'll see. I, I think I want to say that album comes out in the middle of October. I think Brad, because I, I know I ordered okay. a copy of it from our, our local record store. So, oh, okay. Uh, nice. Yeah. And um, Station, I've heard the name, but and actually, I think I have one of their albums on my iTunes, but I don't think I've ever listened to it, but yeah, I am aware of I think of you'd them. dig them. I yeah. think you'd dig them. I'll have to check yeah. them out. Dylan, how about you? What do you got going, buddy? I was listening to Cheap Tricks at Budokan. I just decided to put that album on. I was still feeling a little bit of the live mood after we talked about the solos in li- you know, live songs, and it's just such a good album. It like It is that nice slice of of live that really kind of propelled the band into the stardom that it had. And I just love every song on there. So cheap trick at Budokan. Now, did you listen to the original version or do you listen to the expanded? version? I listened to the original version. Uh, I do sometimes like listening to the expanded version, but I was just feeling the kind of the, the, the original presentation of it. I love that album. That's yeah. It's, great. it's fantastic. Now, Brad, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with that album. Now, when yeah. when you hear "Cheap Trick" at Budokan, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? <laughs> all the all the girls screaming. Okay, how about you, Dylan? <laughs> I want you to want me. The very first thing I think of is the drum intro to "Ain't That a Shame." The doom, doom, oh, there you go. That is That's the very first thing I think of when I hear that. That that opens up. Hello, like there's like a yeah guitar stutter thing. Yeah. That was that, in my. That'd be in my top five things for sure, Steve. Yeah, that, I, that, I, I, that awesome, album's awesome great. drum intro. Oh. Yeah, that's a fun one. And for me, I was listening to um, once again the new Buck Cherry album, Volume Ten, the new Elegant. Uh, well, not new, but the only Elegant Weapons album, Horns for a Halo. Great, you know, super group, if you will: Richie Faulkner, Rex Brown, Scott Travis, Ronnie Romero. I listened to that all the way through yesterday. It's fantastic. And um, and I'm sure you're aware of this album. This I don't know. You could call it a band, I guess. And it's um, originally they were going to be called Tooth and Nail, but apparently copyright something they couldn't do it. So it's T and the N symbol, and then the letter N T and N. And it's yes. um, Mick Brown, Jeff Pilson, and George Lynch, and they do a mix of some Dokken classics and then some original songs in there. It is freaking fantastic. Um, so if you get a chance to check, if you haven't checked that out, check that out. Um, and it's weird because, you know, speaking of Dokken, it's Dokken without Don pretty much. And, um, and I was listening to, um, the Queensryche album, the Jeff Tate version of Queensryche with the Frequency Unknown album that, um, we did. You guys will have, uh, the episode for, I remember now the Queensryche podcast should be out by now. So that's the album that we, we did on that episode and I'll tell you what, I was all kinds of surprised at how much I forgot that I really liked that album. So check that out. So here's what we got going. Brad's got Station, a couple songs from the upcoming album, and the time go and the time goes on. A couple of new songs from the upcoming Docket album, Heaven Comes Down, Fugitive and Gypsy. Dylan's got Cheap Trick at Budokan, myself, some Queensryche, Frequency Unknown, affectionately known as F U. <laughs> and um, Buck Cherry and Elegant Weapons for myself. So I came up with this idea for this album, or not this album, this this episode, this episode um, a, a while back, and I was kind of, and and I think it got spurred on probably, I'm sure, from a, a Kiss discussion, and 
um, you know, going over albums and stuff like that. And and I got to thinking, there's there's so many albums that that I I love, but then like there's that one song on there, you're just like, oh, like man, this would be a perfect album if it wasn't for this song. So that's what we're doing tonight. We each picked what I say six, six, six albums. So it will be like six songs, but we'll talk about the albums and why it ruins it for you. So we have six albums that there's like one track on there that it would be a perfect album otherwise. And then at the end, we're going to just real quickly talk about a couple albums for us individually that are perfect albums for us and just kind of why and just a kind of cool discussion like that. So uh, Brad is going to go first because his uh, ties into he's going to pick the gym song for today, which we don't know what it is yet, but we are going to um, have Brad go first. And uh, Brad, kick us off, my friend. Yeah, and Steve, again, great, great episode idea. And the other beautiful, beautiful thing about this is that we did not share our lists. <laughs> no, we did. We did that. Yep. We did that on purpose, right? Even yep. if there's some crossover, it, it could be a different song. It could be a different song, absolutely. That that somebody chooses. So great. Uh, Great episode idea, uh, for sure. And I've got some, I think, in our text chain. I was like, yeah, there, there are some that just really, really piss me off <laughs> about this. And so the first two are from my high school uh, days, so late 80s, early early 90s. And the first one is Slaughter, Stick It To You. So this thing came out in early 1990, which is my middle of my junior year. And I didn't really care for Up All Night. That's not the song, though. I, I grew to grew to love that song. I didn't didn't love that song, and it didn't make me buy the album. And then the Hot in the Shade tour got announced, and Slaughter was obviously one of the bands uh, that was going to be opening that uh, tour. So I went out and bought the album, listened to the whole thing, loved everything. I mean, I was blown away first listen. On, on, on this album up until the last original track, which is Loaded Gun. And there's that unnecessary intro kind of talking. I don't know where they are, if they're, you know, at a at a bar or whatever. And again, it's like fast, trying to be fast slaughter. But his interjections in his real clean voice on the bang, bang, she's she's going to get you, get you, shoot, shoot, you know, all that stuff. It's just, oh, my God. And I think he even says, how about them apples in the middle of that song <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> that just, it drove me insane. So anyway, I knew I was going to see him live. And I'm like, okay, it's gonna only going to be like six songs or whatever. They're, they're, they're opening the show. And sure enough, they closed with this song oh. and i'm like oh my god there are so many other songs on this album that they could have done so this has always bothered me i i've taken it off actually my itunes i don't even have it on um on my itunes version of the of the album it, it just rubs me the wrong way for sure for sure so, so do you want to? I don't know if you want to. You got to comment on that, or you want me to just go through all six? Yeah, just go through them, and we'll 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 tear you apart. I mean, we'll go over them after you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, all right. So the next one was Skid Row's debut album. So this came out early '89, sophomore in high school. Youth Gone Wild. Yeah, it was okay. Again, I grew to grew to like that song as as I. Uh, as I got older, but I didn't love it right away. 18 in Life, eh. Uh, Piece of Me, I started, hey, oh, I'm going to maybe check this out. I actually loved I Remember You when that then got released. So I bought the album, listened to the whole thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, there are all these other songs are better than the singles <laughs> that they released. But once again, I get to the end. And I'm like, what the hell is this? This is this Midnight Tornado, Midnight slash tornado and it's first of all it was written by snake sabo and i think matt fallon is that the original is that is that the original singer i guess i don't i want to say I, I think so now that you say that yeah i could so, be wrong dylan's looking you it know up. yeah 11 songs on this album it should have been 10 in my in my opinion I, this song just does not fit 
to me, the rest of the tracks on the album. And again, the riff is okay. Verse, not great. Chorus, I, the backing vocals are so overproduced and high in the mix. I, I just, I, it just, I just had a question mark on my on my forehead when I was listening to this thing, and I'm like, what the fuck? And then the last 52 seconds is this instrumental, which the riff is okay, but it's not exactly, you know, fast. I don't know where the name Tornado comes from. And why not use that for another song at another at another time? So anyway, love that entire album until the last until the last song just absolutely turned me off. Yeah, so then Brad, moving it does, on. It does look like uh, Matt Fallon was the original lead singer. That, Skid okay. Row. I thought that was I thought that was the case. And, and funnily and, enough, he was supposed to be the replacement for Neil Turbin in Anthrax and started recording and writing, spreading the disease with them. But then I, you know what? I think, I, yeah, I think I <laughs> remember hearing that or cool. reading that somewhere as well. So, all right. So next up, so Van Halen is, is interesting to, at least to me as a, as a fan, it's like all of their albums there, there's usually one song <laughs> that kind of, that tends to, kind of go off the beaten track and so i i, I kind of cheated here i i did too and i'll, I'll make this one quick because i i didn't want to just do a dlr one because i wanted to wanted to give the hagar era uh some some love as well if you want to if you want to call it that but so my favorite van halen album is women and women and children first and the bookends of that and and pretty much everything in between is awesome but loss of control, I, I never, I never got. And again, musically, it's good, but the chorus always just rubbed me the wrong way. And again, it, it's still uh, the, all the other Van Halen albums. There's there's at least one song that kind of kind of rubs me the wrong way. But this one, this one always stands out for me. I just I never understood the chorus of that song. And then my, my bonus here with little Van Hagar. So 5150, again, great, great album, debut album with, with Sammy Hagar. But the song Inside is is just a shit show, in, in my opinion. Just an absolute mess. And I never understood that track. And it just, again, did not fit the album at all. So there's, there's a little Van Halen love for, for both the... Uh, both eras so let's then fast forward for my fourth pick into the early 2000s so steve was talking about the most recent buck cherry i want to go back to 2001 time bomb which was their second album after the huge hit that they had with their with their debut they they come out with this straight ahead dirty gritty <laughs> rock and roll album and love that whole album, except for the song Porno Star. And Porno Star to me is just a novelty song. I mean, the lyrics sound like they were written by somebody in elementary school. Just, just, just terrible. And and I, I the harmonies in that song too. They almost sound like they're in a minor key, which. Maybe that was obviously was the was the point that they wanted to tie it in there, but oh, just absolutely despise that song, and unfortunately, that, that ruins <laughs> ruins that album from being a perfect album for me. So five and six couldn't uh, couldn't go do this list without. I, I don't get to talk about Kiss, you know, as much as some of the other. Uh, podcasts in our community so i wanted to wanted to talk about kiss a little bit so the first one is one of the aforementioned solo albums that steve was talking about so the paul stanley solo album is fantastic and love every track on there and again normally i don't cop out you know with with uh giving shit about a, a ballad but this was Paul Stanley's first attempt at a ballad, and it was a swing and miss. So not only, I mean, the title, Hold Me, Touch Me, Think of Me When We're Apart, 
is just terrible. I mean, that's just a that's just a terrible title. It's it's got parentheses, which uh, doesn't doesn't need to be there. But the I mean, the piano melody is bad. His vocal falsetto that he's got going in there, the chorus terrible just just terrible and there's no no real outro to the song kind of after the solo i guess it, it does have one redeeming quality is the the guitar solo is good but there's there's no real outro and then the song just kind of kind of ends and this was the sole single from, from this album which there could have been hell they could have chosen anything else on that record i, I think that would have been a better better single off of there and then the group as a whole so i went with kiss revenge came out right when i finished my freshman year in college remember buying it day it came out came home put it on started listening to it loved everything i heard until i believe it was track uh track five so spit (laughs) apart from car jam which again i get why they put that on there. I'm not a huge fan of instrumentals, but I understand why that one is on there. But this, I mean, the verse, the sole vocal from Gene with just that underlying hi-hat on there, that is not good. It's, it, it, it doesn't sound good. His and baby and baby (laughs) parts, which I've heard people make fun of on other shows. I mean, it's just cringe worthy to me though again only only decent part of this is the pre-chorus paul's vocal when he comes in sounds sounds great but otherwise the i need a whole lot of love i mean i need a whole lot of woman that they ripped off uh from from led zeppelin and then you drop the star spangled banner in the middle it's just what the hell are they doing so unfortunately i got to that part of the album like oh god i hope let's let's not uh that's not go down from from there, and certainly it uh, it picked its way back up, and and to me is is otherwise a, a perfect album except for except for that song. So there you go, guys. My uh, one through six with a little little bonus one to include a couple Van Halen albums from both eras. What do you think, Steve? <laughs> All right, um, Slaughter. You have Loaded Gun. I like that. <laughs> There's there's a couple a couple slower ones on that like desperately I'm not a huge fan of so like that one is like there's there's a couple on that one that make it not perfect for me but loaded gun is yep. definitely not one of them um, it is kind of odd that they did it live and closed the shows out with it and I do remember uh, that because yeah. that was my first um, Kiss show as well was yep. the Hot in the Shade tour and, and it was Slaughter and Little Caesar I don't know if, did you get Little Caesar too. No, we got Faster Pussycat. You got Faster Pussycat on ours because I know yeah. Faster Pussycat yeah. was on some, and Winger was on some, and Little Caesar was on some. So, uh, so yeah, so so Steve, our set list was was Mad About You, Burning Bridges, Eye to Eye, Flight of the Angels, Up All Night, and Loaded Gun. Just sounds, those six. That sounds about right. Is what, is what they play. Yeah. yeah, and they probably yeah. didn't deviate too much from that, especially no, you know first not. time out, and they're the you know. Yep. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought they were really good, but it was odd that. They didn't do up all night last. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know that yeah. was the like more odd than them doing loaded gun at the end was that they didn't do the one song that they're known for, like to close out the show. Yep. Um, what's next? Um, oh, Skid, Skid Row. Row. My, I can't even read my writing. It look, actually looks like Striper on my list, but it's, it does say Skid Row. Uh, Midnight Tornado. I don't mind that. Um, I would lean, and and that one I think is is. Um, is pretty damn close to a, a perfect album. It's not an album that I go to a lot. I really like it. The uh, the ballads kind of a little bit kill it for me. But I think that's more of fatigue than not liking the songs. But uh, Midnight and Tornado, it is odd. It's kind of an outlier on the album. I think that if that song was not on there, it wouldn't be missed. Um, You're right, yeah. Van yeah. Halen, Lost Control, You Are Out of Your Fucking Mind. Um <laughs> I, I will dump, um, what's that shitty song? And I just pointed to it. I know what you're going to say. You, you know say could this say. be magic? I fucking hate wrong. that. You're it's wrong horrible. That. It's horrible. Um, but Lost in Control, I like that. Can you remain that? Can you remain that? Can you remain that? Ooh, baby, you think I don't know. 
Because even the background are cool on that. Lost control, lost control, lost control. Um, I just can't. The chorus just oh, I it. love it. Um, and works. Inside, I think it's fun. It's got that bass groove. It's it's a little bit of them trying to do, Sammy trying to do a Dave Van Halen song, I think is what exactly. kind of yeah. gets that for me. They try to, you know, because like, al- like really that album is like a, a more serious album than the, the the Dave era ones. And then they put this one at the end to say that, you know, hey, we could have it just as much fun as David Lee Roth, which is not fucking even humanly possible. They start the album with, hello, <laughs> baby. What yeah, yeah right. that too, right? That too. It's not no, a serious no, album. No. Uh, it's not, it's uh, not a What do we got? Buck Cherry, Time Bomb. I'm not totally familiar with that album. I do know the song Porn Star, and I don't mind it, but I don't, I'm don't. i not really familiar with like that whole album, so that one I can't have too much commentary on. Um, yep. Kiss Paul Stanley, Hold Me, Touch Me is absolutely <laughs> a bottom five Kiss song for me. It's out of so the whole bad. fucking catalog. Oh. It's I love I love horrible. Paul's other ballads. You know, after that one, I pretty much love everything else that he you know that yeah. he wrote. I will, that's just terrible. I will take. Ugh. I finally found my way over this a million fucking times. I this song just here. totally blows. And <laughs> um, spit. I think spit is kind of fun, but that song it's all over the place. Like you said, exactly. there's the Star Spangled yeah. Banner it's in there, and then there's the all that shit in there too. It's it's just. It's uh, it's it's fun, changes. but it's like fucked up. It's there's so much shit in there that um, and you know that they wanted to call the song shit. You know what I mean? Don't mean exactly. shit to me. You know, yeah. but um, I just wanna. I just wanna. I mean, there's the, uh, there's songs. probably yeah. three songs in there actually. You know, there's three yeah. It's separate just like a freaking mishmash. Sure. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> um, I I don't I I don't like um, the the ballad on that on on. Revenge. The, uh, every time I look at you. Every time, every time I, yeah, I look at you. Yeah. yeah. Nah. Give me, give me forever, anytime. But uh, yeah. cool list. Uh, that's why I like talking about this shit because like there's like ones that like like especially lost control. Brad, come on, get yourself, <laughs> check yourself in, man. <laughs> uh, Dylan, what are you? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm pretty much in agreement uh, with uh, both of you at certain points. Uh, with Skid Row. For sure, I consider the album ending at "I Remember You." I just think that that's yep. a, a good closer to the album, and I don't even recognize "Midnight Tornado" as <laughs> as a song. It's almost like a bonus <laughs> track to me at that point. Uh, yep. Lost Control is one of my favorite Van Halen songs, so I definitely don't agree that it that it, <laughs> it ruins the album because "Woman and Children First is a fantastic album, and I think partially because of "Lost Control." Brad, you had to see Dylan's face when you said "Lost Control." I was very surprised. <laughs> he was like, oh! <laughs> uh, hold uh, me touch me it's a a, a god tier uh producers reference but uh not what? a great song Produ- the producers you know hold me touch me oh, oh, oh okay all right yeah, yeah. <laughs> as hold soon as we're in the me. as soon as we're in the other room <laughs> um and spit i you don't like the ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. oh god so bad <laughs> I, I they're having they're having fun with it, so I, I have fun with it too. Uh, I love how Revenge is like the darkest album, but it, there's a song like Spit on there, or you know Domino's kind of kind of a little cheerier. But yeah, it's the it's the Bob Ezrin showing. Yeah, yeah, just the the different oddness, and there's always like some kind of weird middle. Thank God there's no kids on thing in there. No kids on this one though. That's true. Uh, those kids were. And again, don't, I normally I, I normally like those Ezrin. I know some people don't like that. that I don't mind shit, it, but some of that stuff I, I kind of like it. But for this, yeah, that song it just it's just such a mess. Yeah, I just I can't I can't go with it. So and, and I'm really excited because we only had one band crossover, but no album nice. crossovers. So very excited nice. about that. Good deal. All right. Um, Brad, good, 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 bad list, I guess we could say. I good. <laughs> um, so, uh, like I said before, BB and BC couldn't make it tonight. So, but BB, but BC, but BB, but BC, but BB, but BB, but BB, but BB, but um, So, I do have their lists, though. So, I'll, I'm going to do BBs and I'll do BCs. So, nice. BBs, and actually, he gave me his in, in, in an order. Oh. So, but I don't know if this is order of like, I think he just numbered them just to. Well, I think it's, I think it's going down. Like yes, yeah, yeah. So, for at number six, he has. Um, from Back in Black, ACDC, he has Shook Me All Night Long. He has number five, 
Tesla from Mechanical Resonance changes. Hmm. Number four from Twisted Sister Stay Hungry, he has The Beast. Number three, he has Motley Crue from Shout at the Devil, Helter Skelter. Number two, he has Kiss from Love Gun and Then She Kissed Me. And then number one, he has Ozzy from the Blizzard of Oz album, Revelation Mother Earth. So um, I'll just go through them, then we can, we'll can we go around. Mm-hmm. Um, Shook Me All Night Long, I have no problem with that song. I, I think that is, I think ACDC Back in Black is a perfect album. I think just the fatigue which shook me all night long. Because like, and, and I don't care who you are, you got to admit, when you first got this album, you fucking loved that song. Mm-hmm. You you know what I mean? I mean, I, I speaking personally, I love the song. It's just like, you just hear it too much. Every wedding you hear it at, you hear it everywhere. It was at every one of my semi and prom. Yeah, yeah. It's a staple. It's a staple. Um, Tesla for Mechanical Resonance changes. I think Mechanical Resonance is a pretty damn perfect album. Um, even though Changes is a little slower tempo, but the solo when it rips, it's good. It's got kind of a build to it. Twisted Sister, he has The Beast from Stay Hungry. Um, it's the nature of the beast. It's it's a it's a plotting song, but um, if I had to pick from that album, it would be The Price. Because hmm. I looked at this album to, at Stay Hungry to do, and The Price was the album that, that, that booted it out for me. Motley Crue, Helter Skelter from Shout Out the Devil. Um, I have... No problem with that song whatsoever. I think it's a good version of it. And then she kissed me, Love Gun, absolutely, positively, 100% ruins the perfect kiss album for me. And Revelation, Mother Earth from the Blizzard of Oz. Um, the only song that would really boot that album for me would be Goodbye to Romance. I fucking hate that song. It is fucking <laughs> terrible. But all the other stuff on there, I have no problem with because I was even looking at um, Diary of a Madman, but. Little Dolls, and um, what the hell is the other one? There's two. Uh, and Tonight. Hmm. I think they just suck ass. So uh, what, do, what do you think, Brad? Uh, this is yeah, so list. interesting. Yeah, interesting list. I mean, Back in Black, I mean, You Shook Me, it's obviously from Fatigue. You know, I mean, you go back to when you the first time you heard that album. You know, there was <laughs> there's there's not a bad there's not a bad track on there, but I can I can understand where he's coming from. Uh, mechanical resonance changes. I, I mean, my 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 uh, that hurt that hurt when you read that off, uh, Steve, because <laughs> that's that and love me are my two favorite songs off of that album. Actually, oh really? I mean, I I, I love I love changes. So I was a, a little little surprised. Yeah, that's that's pretty much a perfect uh, a perfect album for me. Uh, Stay hungry, the beast. Yeah, it's kind of an kind of an odd. You know, it's obviously odd tempo, like you said, Steve, kind of plotting. But I like that because it gave it a little variety uh, on that on that album. It so broke it up. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have chosen that. Helter Skelter, and again, maybe again choosing a cover. He's got another cover, uh, you know, coming up next on on his list. And I'm with you, Steve. I think it's a, a great version of of the song uh it's a it's a good cover so i i kind of disagree there then she kissed me and you know send send the hate mail but i mean as a as a six-year-old or whatever listening listening to that i didn't know it was a cover when i originally heard it and so there it's always had a (laughs) and again it's more nostalgia probably with me but i don't i don't have a i don't have a problem with that song uh ozzy yeah i was i was tinkering around with some ozzy albums on whether or not i wanted to wanted to go there i you know revelation mother earth it's it's uh it's different you know it's a different song but i yeah i'm not sure i would uh i i would have i mean the first two ozzy solo albums are are pretty pretty close to being perfect in my in my book, but interesting list uh, that uh, that he had and had some obviously different stuff than than what I had. So yeah, and it's and it's funny, you know, throughout the years on the podcast, it's you know the 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 saying is always you know you like what you like, but now it's like yeah. you don't like what you don't like. <laughs> so right. how about right. you, Dylan? What do you got for BB? So we have our first uh, album and artist crossover for me. But it's a different song. Okay. Uh, so I, should I 
reveal that now, or should I save it for my... Save it for yours. Okay. Unless, you, unless you have a different one you want to throw out later, whatever. It's okay. up to you. So I'll, whatever, I'll, whatever you I won't do. talk about that. It's up to you. But um, some, I'll just... And I'll, I'll, I'll um, omit some other albums just to keep it keep everybody guessing. Uh, yeah, so Helter Skelter I don't think is bad at all. I, I love the original version. I love this cover. Uh, and I think they add something to the cover, too. It's not one of those covers that... It's it's straightforward, but they had they put a little English on the cur- on the cue ball. Um, like I love the the drums that that's added to it. Uh, of course, there's no it doesn't end with I've got blisters on my fingers, which is the one flaw of the <laughs> song. But uh, otherwise, I think that uh, Shout Out the Devils a fantastic album, and I don't think this is a weak point in it. And then she kissed me. I think he put that on there to pander to you. I think that was a pandering <laughs> pick. You think so? Um, I love when rock bands cover like fifties doo wop songs like i love twisted sisters leader of the pack cover i love this you know i like when they go to that vibe so i don't mind it especially as it's the last track on the album so you're like all you have to do is just lift the needle a little early like that it does it doesn't hurt anybody no harm no foul uh i think that that's it's in the perfect position to put that kind of song on the album and to me even though that wasn't one of the albums i listed as a perfect album because I knew we would be talking about it in some way, shape, or form because I figured either you would pick it or somebody else. I think and then it she was gets it was too low hanging. Fr- I I, I yeah. will tell you I didn't pick it. It was too low hanging fruit for me to pick. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. But yeah, the those are the the ones I'll comment on since uh, I might be commenting on one of the other albums <laughs> in my picks. Okay, so then comment on the other ones later. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Well, All and right. I don't really have much to say, or I've said them in previous okay. episodes. All right. Okay. All right, so there's there's BB, so let's get BCs out there. Let's and I'll, I'll go from his sixth up to... I don't think his are any order. I think, like I said before... Yeah, like what, did Renee, what did Renee pick just, this time? Um, I, I will say <laughs> that I don't think Renee's familiar with this shit. Okay. okay I will just say right. that. Um, okay, so he has... And, and I, uh, I'll just go through them, then I'll do my commentary. Um, he has Kick Axe. The album is Welcome to the Club, and he has With a Little Help from My Friends. <laughs> Every Mother's Nightmare, the self-titled album, Love Can Make You Blind. Britney Fox, self-titled album, Save the Week. Wasted, here's uh, Danny Vonnegut, B, or Dylan, <laughs> Danny Vonnegut. <laughs> Wasted uh, from the Save Your Prayers album, the song So Long. Vain, the song with Without You from No Respect. And he has Helix from the album Wild in the Streets, Dream On. So for me... You know where I'm going with Kick Axe, a little help for my friends. I want to fucking run in front of a train when I hear that song with anybody doing it. It blows. <laughs> um, Every Mother's Nightmare, Love Can Make You Blind. That's like their, I would say, their hit. Um, I don't mind it. I think that's a really, really solid album. But it's one from them that I think I've heard the most, and I, I can live without it. Um, Britney Fox, Save the Week from the self title one. Yeah, that song just sucks ass. <laughs> like... Like you got a hard rock album and then you're saving the week. I, I don't I just don't think it fits in that album at all. It's just stupid. It's like when the children cry on White Lion. Like, why why are you singing about this shit? You're a fucking rock band. I'm sorry. You're not we are the world. Um Wasted So Long from Save Your Prayers. Um I think we did that album on, on one of BC's birthdays, I think. I want to say that was one of the birthday I'm albums. I'm gonna be honest, I completely blanked out any <laughs> mention of Danny Vaughn. <laughs> Danny Vaughn. Had, uh... <laughs> sorry, Danny. Um this one, I, I, I don't really remember this song, so it, it's pretty um, forgettable. Uh, Without You, Vain, from No Respect. Um, that's another one, too, that, I'm, that I mustn't really pay attention to because it doesn't even ring a freaking bell with me. And Dream On from Helix, Wild in the Streets. Um, yeah, that's that, and that's a good album. That's a solid, hard rock album. Uh, great band from Canada. Another band that I've never got to see which i was i'm surprised they haven't been on i think they were on earlier monsters of rock cruises but i don't think that they've been um on well i mean they obviously haven't been on one that we've been on so far so i was hoping to catch them one of the years on there so uh dylan of what you know what do you think (laughs) boy it's wild (laughs) i think brad's gonna be a little more familiar (laughs) because i literally have every single one of these albums and he picked the exact same song that i was gonna say so you know it's he, he did all my talking for me now. Um, so Renee's picking for both of you? Yeah. Um, the only thing I could really comment on is I, I I get very frustrated that everybody covers the Joe Cocker version of Little Help With My Friends. Like, 
I don't think that that is the better version of the song. I think that the Beatles version is better. I don't know why, but everybody always goes for the slow plotting. I would rather um, the Ringo, Ringo sings that, right? Yeah, yeah. That it's off, I don't it's mind. Nice. It's when, when they do it, and oh, God, yeah, it, Tom Kiefer does it. I want to kill myself. Everybody goes to the Wonder <laughs> Years, and you know, it, it, I just I, I Joe wish Cocker that, sucks. I the the best thing about Joe Cocker was the uh, John Belushi. Uh, parody of Joe Cocker on <laughs> on SNL the one time he did a great job <laughs> portraying Joe Cocker, but uh, yeah, the BC is doing fantastic picking uh, the wild cards that I, I can't talk about. Um, I like, even Vane, I don't remember that song. I don't either. I don't so either. I can't. So it's 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 yeah, it's forgettable. So let's skip her for me too. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have some that. People might not be familiar with, but not the full list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that every song. But but that's 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 our BC. That's we come. That's to our BC. BC. Um, <laughs> my mine. Um, I think everyone will know mine. Okay. Well, most of them, anyways. All right, so there's Brad's. Hold, hold on, do oh, we want to? Oh, ask Brad, oh, Brad I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Brad, yeah, go no ahead. worries. No worries. Yeah, it's, like it's, I said, I messed uh, up today. Yeah, I wouldn't expect anything anything less from BC than going deep. He went deep. Um, but yeah, so with, with a little help from my friends, nope, the Beatles obviously originally did it. Joe Cocker covered it. That should be the end of it. Nobody else should be <laughs> t- touching that song. Uh, in my opinion, I like both versions uh, of that song, but, uh, especially a, a hard rock band shouldn't, uh, probably shouldn't be covering it. Every mother's night w- nightmare. I'm, I'm familiar with them, but I, and I think that you're right, Steve, this is the hit. Right. This yep. is the hit they had. Um, Britney Fox. Yeah, that that album is fantastic. But this song. Uh, yeah. Again, kind of forcing, forcing, trying to trying to do a, a ballad um, wasted, f- somewhat familiar with, but can't really comment on on the song that he gave vain. You know, it was funny while you guys were were talk when you were talking there, uh, Dylan, I was bringing up my iTunes because I put. I, I put little stars next to songs in my on my iTunes. So I brought up Vane, No Respect, and I I don't have I don't have without you checked. So my guess is I'm not a fan of that song. And then Helix actually same thing. I'm I'm familiar with, with that song. It's it's not very good. And again, that album is 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 good other than other than that song. I'm not a not a fan of. But yeah. Leave it to BC to to go pretty deep. I love it. Love yeah. it. Yeah, and and that's one of the one of the uh, pitfalls of not sharing the lists of getting an outlier right. list. But we should be used to it from BC. But I mean, I know nine tenths of of what what BC put on there. Just like a couple I wasn't familiar with, but um, I I didn't expect anything less. And I actually he didn't literally give give me his list until seven thirty tonight. So. Like and I worked with him all day. I worked with him for twelve hours today. So I could have at least, if he gave me the list a little earlier in the day, I could have checked a couple of them songs out and said, "Yeah, um, no." But uh, you know, it just, I just, I just didn't get the list till till later. And BB's, I, I got BB sent me his like early afternoon, so I had time. But like I knew all of his off the bat. So yeah. All right. Yeah, so yeah. there's there's Brad BB's and BC's, and Brad's gonna give us the gem song. Then we can get into some hidden gems. What do you got, Brad? Yeah, so like I said, it's it's kind of tied into my my list. So you go back to the the slaughter uh, choice. So I'm I'm listening to that first album, thinking of songs that I hope that they I hope that they play. And <laughs> Steve, you're gonna you're gonna oh. love this, but I wanted them to play desperately. <laughs> so that's the gem song, desperately from right. Slaughter's debut album. Stick it to you.
right, welcome back. Brad played uh, my one of my favorite songs from the Slaughter album, <laughs> Desperately. So, and, and I and when we were on our little break here, I, I said to Brad, I said I did actually play that song all the way through coming home from the airport the other day, and um, it wasn't as bad as you know I didn't. <laughs> It was the one one of the few times I didn't put the boneyard on when I was listening to it on XM. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do a little hidden gem action here. And uh, Dylan, what do you got? So my hidden gem is an album that I think uh, you're at least familiar with, Dad, uh, from Sister Sin, True Sound of the Underground, that was released back in 2010. A fantastic album. A great band that's no longer going. I think uh, lives is it Liv Sin? Liv Sin. I think yeah. she's currently going solo. Who she was the has singer. now about this year. Uh, but the band itself was fantastic. You know, songs like 24-7, uh, you know, Outrage, I think, is one of the other ones mm-hmm. that's on there. Uh, just a great album, a great hard rock album from, I believe they're Swedish, Scandinavian? They're they're from that area. Yeah, because we, uh, they played at they played Eleanor Rigby's, yeah. and BC and I talked to her for about a half an hour. Yeah. And, um... And that was one of the things you talked about. You know, we asked her, you know, how do you like the United States? And she said she hated our food. She couldn't wait to get home because of the food she didn't like here. <laughs> All right, cool. Brad, how about you? What do you got? Yeah, so I'm going to stick kind of with my theme on on what I was listening to. So a song coming off an upcoming album. Have you guys heard the new Rolling Stones song? No, no. I haven't. Oh, so it's titled Angry. The The song is. The album's called Hackney Diamonds, which comes out October 20th. And, I mean, it's old school, you know, old school Rolling Stones riff. And Mick, and there's there's some more magic. We were talking about Don Doc and then the, and the magic in the studio. So there's some magic on his vocal. But it is fantastic. It's got a great... Uh, great pre-chorus and and chorus and again the riff is is awesome in the video the video is worth a a watch (laughs) so i'll just leave that there anyone that's seen it will know what i'm talking about and you guys will too when you when you watch it but check it out i'm actually looking looking forward to hearing the rest of this album but i I was pretty impressed all right cool i i'll have to try actually i think i i put that in my in my uh, Apple Music, but I didn't get a chance to check it out yet. So I will definitely yeah. check that out. And for nice. me, I'm going to go with the solo artist, Ronnie Atkins, lead singer for Pretty Maids, or I, I hate to even say it, maybe from Pretty Maids, because it doesn't seem like that him and Ken Hammer are doing anything anymore, and they essentially are Pretty Maids. But um, Ronnie has... Right now, officially two solo albums out. The first one is One Shot from 2021. From 2022, he has one called Make It Count. And he has one coming out either October or November, and it's called Trinity. So if you are having a hankering for some new Pretty Maids, you're not going to get it. But Ronnie Atkins um, is obviously one of the main guys from Pretty Maids. So that's probably as close as you're going to get. And he still sounds great. And his band has, I believe, two guys in it from Pretty Maids. So uh, it's pretty much kind of Pretty Maids without Ken Hammer. And and the songs are are really good. There's a lot of... Because he's obviously, uh, if you guys don't know, um, he's uh, stage... I think he's stage four lung cancer. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and you know, wasn't looking good from there. So he's in remission, apparently. And so his songs, there's a more of a, more of an inspirational type feel to the lyrics and the songs. So it's a little more, uh, you know, more. I won't say. Uh, I'll just say like more like inspirational, like not religious stuff, but just like you know, get up and do something with your life, and you know, more more of a positive message. I'll say. So check that out. So for our hidden gems. Brad's got the new Stone song, Angry, from the upcoming album, Hackney Diamonds. Dylan's got some Sister Sin, True Sound of the Underground, which is fantastic. And I have the Ronnie Atkins solo, Trinity, if you will. Make it count, one shot, and the new one coming out, Trinity. So we're going to get back to the lists, and it is my turn. So I'm going to give you mine. 
I I did a I did a couple extra just in case there was uh, a run over, and I, I did have the Paul Stanley solo album on the same song as Brad, so I'm gonna <laughs> skip that. I already gave my feelings on that one, so I'm gonna go to 1985 with the Dio album Sacred Heart, one of the uh, probably the lesser of the three Dio albums with Vivian Campbell on it. And I'm going to go with the final track, Shoot, Shoot. It is, the song is just fucking terrible. It's, it, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't fit the album. It's got tracks on there, King of Rock and Roll, Sacred Heart, Another Lie, Rock and Roll Children. Like, The Beat of a Heart is friggin' fantastic on there. And Shoot, Shoot is just, Shoot, Shoot, da, 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 da. It's just <laughs> not good. And, um, I'm going to go to probably Sonny Pony's favorite band, Y&T. And I absolutely fucking love, love this album. Down from the Down for the Count. I think this one is also 1985, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the song is the last, again, the last track, Hands of Time. I it's it's okay, but it's just like it, it for me. It doesn't fit the album. You have great songs like it opens up within the name of rock all american boy anytime at all anything for money and they do a version of your mama don't dance that kicks poison's fucking ass down the street and back up and um and the one song on there don't tell me what to wear is just a fun song very cool great dave manichetti vocals the guitar playing on this album is great the production is great it has a little bit of that keyboard kind of thing but not like it's not overdone. Like when you get to like uh, like contagious and ten, like down the road a little bit, you get a little more of that poppy keyboard shit. But there's just a fine line on this album that you get it, um, just where it's not overwhelming. Then I'm gonna go to 1980. Our boys Judas Priest, Dylan. Huh? British Steel. Okay. Fantastic classic album. When I get to United, I just want to yeah. cry. United, <laughs> United. It's just it. It's it's too rah rah, too contrived. It just sucks. I mean, look at the rest of the shit that's on this album, like Rapid Fire, Metal Gods, Breaking the Law, Grinder, and even deeper tracks like The Rage and Steeler. Um, and even you don't have to be old to be wise. It's cool, really cool song. But like United just sucks ass. So that's um that's three for me, right? One, two. Yeah, three. Three. Okay. So and I'm gonna go to um back to nineteen eighty five once again for the and I absolutely love this band, Night Ranger. Absolutely love them, the Seven Wishes album. I played the shit out of this album when it came out. But the song, track number seven on here, I will follow you. It's just boring. There's some cool stuff on this album. You have Seven Wishes. The song Faces is awesome. You got Four in the Morning that they're still playing to this day. Goodbye is great on there. Interstate Love Affair, they still play that. Sentimental Street, they still play a lot of shit off of this. I Need a Woman, I've seen them play in the last couple years, I think. But I Will Follow You is just a dud. It just like lands totally flat for me on here. And then, you know I gotta go here, Dylan. You know I gotta. 1979, Van Halen 2. No. Women in Love. There it is. <laughs> oh. I, I, I can't even put into words how much I hate this fucking song. It's terrible. It just, we just did. kills the flow of this amazing <laughs> album. It does. You have, um, I mean, even for the, 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 the poppiness of Dance the Night Away, you have, um, like, like it, then it goes, you know, somebody get me a doctor, bottoms up, out of love again. You can't really count Spanish Fly. You're gonna get, you're gonna get a little Eddie, um, some kind of guitar thing on every fucking album. So, but that's our, but Spanish Fly is cool. Do 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 do. DOA, you go to DOA and then, oh, women in the, oh, like come on, this sucks. And beautiful girls ends with a kiss. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So then for my... All right, Dylan, I'm going to um, pick one or two. Two. You're, You're going to pick two. Okay. Give me two. So I had two Iron Maiden albums picked here. Oh, okay. So I'm going with 2021's Senjutsu, the title track. Horrible. Horrible track. It's 
and and there's and I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of Iron Maiden songs that I'm like are the boring as fuck. This song is beyond boring as fuck. And and when they op- and and they open up with the show with this, I had expectations. Okay, maybe this will be one of them songs like for me like um, the evil that men do that I hate it. That when I see it live, it's gonna kick ass. It was it was even more of a dud live. It's just so plotting and it sucks. So there's there's my albums and my songs. I mean, in the last in the Senjutsu album itself is absolutely fantastic. Maybe I would like Senjutsu a little more if it was in a different spot on the album. But to open the album with it, I mean, it just sucks. All right, so I got Dio Sacred Heart, Shoot Shoot is the song, Y and T Down for the Count, Hands of Time. Judas Priest, British Steel, I have United. Van Halen 2 with Women in Love. And Night Ranger, Seven Wishes. And um, I Will Follow and Iron Maiden Stratego. What do you think, Brad? So wait, so Iron Maiden, it was the title cut, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's not sorry, you said Stratego. Stratego. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jitsu. I, I apologize on that one. Yep. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Yeah, and I, I See, I'm trying to forget there, it. Because I saw the same tour that you saw, and that, that thing, that was a dud. <laughs> it was Major a dud, dud opener. So, yeah, I I agree. I think there's a couple other songs on there. I mean, this isn't the only one that I – there's a couple other songs on there that I'm not a huge fan of, but I, I'm with you uh, on that it, it certainly was a – a dud live and didn't uh, change my opinion of it. So I guess, yeah, going in reverse order here, Van Halen two, So women in love. And I, I think I, I can't remember if I, I may, may have commented something on one of your posts, Steve, at, at one point, I mean, women in love, that instrument, that guitar instrumental at the beginning, that, yeah, you did. A, you did. That's enough. That's enough for that song to, to stay on there in my, in my opinion. So I think that whole album is, is good is is good so i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't take that off funny that you you chose night ranger seven wishes you know i mentioned uh that tony masalem was on uh one of my recent episodes we we dove into the the first five night ranger albums actually and so kind of going back and and re-listening to those uh in their entirety yeah i agree there's some great stuff on seven wishes but yeah there were a couple songs and this this was one of them that that uh didn't do much for me so so we're on the same page there priest yeah british steel united and i saw priest do the do this album in its entirety and when they got to this song (laughs) it just didn't uh it's a dud as you can imagine it didn't it didn't work i mean everything else worked really well uh live you know from that album except for except for that song ynt down for the count under i mean it's got summertime girls on it obviously so i, I was gonna say it's 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 underrated I, I think it is though i think it's forgotten you know other than that song and there is great stuff on there and i i as i told you before, guys before i i've got my itunes up here and i'm i'm kind of going to those those albums and sure enough if I did not, that was the only song I did not have a star next to. <laughs> so I can't even remember it. Yeah, it's, it's um, boring. It's forgettable. It's not good. It's obviously not good. Um, and then Dio, Sacred Heart. Actually, I'm a, I don't mind it. I mean, it's, it is kind of a, the shoot shoot there at the end. I, I think it's got a decent, uh, decent riff to it. The chorus is a little bit, uh, a little bit goofy, but I, I don't, uh, I don't dislike that song. Um, uh, as as much as you do, but great great list. You were you were uh, you had a nice variety in there. So all right. good stuff. Cool. All right, Dylan. What do you think, buddy? What do you got? I, I definitely agree that United is the weakest track off of British Steel. Uh, I would I would say that that is probably a, a very close to perfect album for sure. And I was I was him and Han about doing a couple of Priest albums because there's a lot of really solid front to back Judas Priest albums. But like there were like I was. A kind couple of, are eh. yeah, a couple, a couple wobble more than once, but uh, I, I, I understand your dislike of women in love more than I understand your dislike of could this be magic? Um, <laughs> I <laughs> sucks, I, uh, but I don't, I still don't think it's a bad song. And again, I would choose could this be magic over women in love though, if that okay. helps you. I, I okay, good. Um, but again, it's like the the last song in the album, so. 
Like, if you want to consider Beautiful Girls to be Dakota of that album... Well, it that's, is. It is. Oh, I thought... No, well, Women in Love is before Beautiful Girls. Is that right? Yes. Okay. It's, it it's in between yeah. DOA yeah, yeah. and Beautiful Girls. Okay, well, that... Yeah, that... It, it suffers from that placement, <laughs> for sure, then, because those are two fantastic songs. All-time classics for Van Halen. Sinjitsu, I don't think that's a perfect album, but Sinjitsu is definitely one I of the it. weaker tracks off it. of there, so I uh, I agree with you on that. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the poppy side of Y&T, so I don't really go to Down for the Count as much, um, so I'm not as familiar with that song. And what other song? what other album did you have? Uh, I did Night Ranger. Night Ranger, Seven Wishes. Seven I'm not wishes. as familiar with Seven Wishes. The, I, for some reason with Night Ranger, I only go to the first two albums, but I need to branch out. I do. Go to Seven Wishes. Yeah. Seven Wishes is absolutely fantastic. And I also I had um, Dio. Dio. So, so yeah, Sacred and Heart. Heart. yeah. And again, first two albums I really go to for Dio, and I don't go to Sacred Heart as much. So, yeah, but uh, I, I definitely agree with your choices of songs. Uh, though I might not agree that... They're perfect albums. That they're perfect albums. Well, I mean, like British Steel, I would say, for sure. That that's a that that's like definitely the album that put them on the map, and I could see why. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, since you're talking, Dylan, you got your list. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I only had one album that had crossover with everybody, and I'll start with that one. Uh, I also picked Blizzard of Oz from uh, Ozzy, 1980, and I agreed with you, Dad. I thought Goodbye to Romance was the the song that kind of tanks that album for me. And and it's not that it's a bad song. It is. Uh, I just think that it, it doesn't fit the vibe of the album. Like, even D kind of is is fun with the showcasing Randy's dexterous guitar skills. And you get to hear him talk. And you get to bit. hear... Yeah. So I'm, I, I don't dislike that part at all. But um, I think Revelation, Mother Earth, fits the album a lot better than Goodbye to Romance does. So that's why I, I kind of focus more towards that. Uh, continuing on the ballad game, uh, I went to Boston 1976, and I honestly think that this album is a perfect album, but if I had to pick one song off of it that doesn't quite fit, it's Let Me Take You Home Tonight. Because the rest of the songs are all kind of up-tempo rockers, they have that that kind of feel-good party vibe, whereas Let Me Take You Home Tonight kind of slows that down a bit, and that again, that's not to say it's a bad song, I do like that song, and of course it... It gets radio play to this day, but compared to like rockers like Four Play Long Time and uh, Rock and Roll Band and Smoking, Smoke In, you know, it, it, it doesn't quite fit that that vibe that I want from such an amazing debut album. Um, I'm sure that that's going to probably get me a lot of uh, hate from there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> moving on towards uh, newer pastures. I went to Ghosts in Para from 2022 and uh, Darkness at the Heart of My Love. Again, it's it's a song that that's kind of the ballad of the album, quote unquote. Uh, it, it just for me, it's not the vibe that I go for with Ghost, and it kind of derails it a tiny bit for me. The rest of the album is fantastic. You have amazing songs like Kay- Kaiserian, uh, Spillways, uh, Hunter's Moon. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Call Me a Little Sunshine, instant classic. Uh, but Darkness of the Heart of My Love kind of is a little lighter for me. Then we go to 2009. I did pick a Kiss song and, uh, and a Kiss album, and I picked Sonic Boom. <laughs> and let me tell you why. I think Sonic Boom is a great comeback album for Kiss. I think that it showcases the band very well. I think they're really firing on, on great cylinders, and it kind of gives everybody some equal love. You know, you do get the one Eric and the one Tommy song. But the song that I picked from Sonic Boom that I think ruins the album is stand because gene promised us at the beginning of this album cycle when he was doing the press there's no ballads there's no you know kumbaya songs it's it's all rockers and i contend that stand is a is a ballady like kumbaya song you know that that chorus could have been right up there with god gave rock and roll to you and you know they stand by my side Ugh. when you need me. <laughs> like it's so it's it's the bad kind of corny. Like it, it like it, it grates my ears every time I hear it. So that kind of ruins the album for me. Uh, then we'll go to two albums that uh, I'm not sure if either of you are familiar as familiar with them as I am. Uh, going to the Silver Scream from Ice Night Kills from 2018. Uh, I, of course, love this band. I can't stop talking about them. The one song I picked off of that album is Freak Flag. 
And the reason I picked that is, so there are, uh, and I want to triple check this, uh, I believe there are eight singles off of this album, out of the 13 tracks that are on this on the album, and that is not one of them, and it is because it's kind of middling. It, it doesn't really add much to the, the track list, it's kind of a, a typical metalcore song, and it also doesn't add much in terms of the content, because each song is based off of a different horror movie. And we already had a song that was based off of Texas Chainsaw Massacre called Savages, which is a great song. And this one is based off of Devil's Rejects, which kind of, it kind of fills that same vibe of, you know, hellbilly, kind of crazy, psycho family type of deal. And it doesn't really add anything to the rest of the album that the, the other songs do. And the other songs kind of have different vibes to them. And this one's just kind of there. So that, that's why I had to put that as the song that ruined that perfect album. And then my last song uh, is from American Idiot in 2004. Uh, it is the last track off of American Idiot, What's Her Name. And it's again, it's not because I dislike this song. What's the name of the song? What's Her Name. Oh, I thought you were just saying What's Her Name. Like, yeah, no, that's the uh, that's the character's name in the in the album and the, the, the song. And the reason why I dislike this is because I think Homecoming is the perfect way to end this album. Because this is a rock opera album. It tells a story from beginning to end. And then What's Her Name is more of a coda where it's almost like a, a an, an epilogue of sorts, and it, it kind of doesn't really fit what we were doing with the rest of the album. It's like almost like, okay, we're just going to give you this one extra song. Like, I, I think it's a great song, but like it's, if you're, it's if you're there. yeah, if you're doing a rock opera from front to back, you know, this song could have been excised. It could have been placed on another album. Um, What's Her Name, of course, is a character in the uh, American Idiot story, but... I don't think you need this song to tell the story. So I think that that could have been taken off of the album. But those are my six albums. Uh, Silver Scream, uh, Sonic Boom, American Idiot, Impera, Boston, and Blizzard of Oz. All right. All right, Brad, what do you got for Dylan? Yeah, so I think Dylan, one of those, or that uh, Ice Nine Kills album, was one of the two that you had on that other episode we did, right? Mm-hmm. Where we tried to combine, yes. right? Wasn't that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I'm not familiar enough with it, so I can't really comment on it. But I wanted to make sure that 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 was one of the two. And then Ghost. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that familiar with Ghost, so I can't, can't really comment on that one either. But the other four, I can. You know, Blizzard of Oz, Goodbye to Romance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's slow. I, I like it. I like the harmonies in it, and I think he did it. I saw Ozzy for the first time on the No More Tours tour, and I think he did it live on that that tour. And my recollection was it was it was actually pretty awesome um, to see it live. Boston, uh, yeah, that that debut album, I'm, I think it's untouchable actually. So I got to disagree <laughs> with you. That's yes, that song is different than than kind of the vibe of the other. Uh, other songs on there but i yeah i think it's i still think it's i still think it's awesome sonic boom so our friends over at uh shout out loud cast did a, a review did you hear that episode i did Steve? yep or did <laughs> so yep. they they it's got better than a, asylum a shit storm of yeah right shit storm of of comments and i you know i i like the album i you know I think people dislike it because of who's playing on it more than I think looking at the songs. Cause I, it, this thing sounds more like old school kiss than psycho circus does. And so again, I think, I think people are listening with their eyes a little bit more when they, when they talk about that album stand, I, I, but I don't think it's a perfect album stand. I, I didn't like initially, but I, it kind of grew on me. A little bit, even though some of those interjections are cheesy as hell, you know, over your shoulder or whatever the hell he says. <laughs> it, it is it is a little cheesy, but I'm an animal or danger us, I think, or I think are worse uh, on on that album. And then Green Day. Lo- lo- love your list, though, Dylan. I mean, the, the variety. But yeah, Green Day, I, I agree with you that that thing should have ended. <laughs> it should have ended with uh, with Homecoming. Um, what what is it? The death of uh, yeah, death of Saint Jimmy, Saint Jimmy, right? Yeah. So I I love 
love that album saw that tour actually and uh but i agree with you it uh it should have it should have stopped uh at homecoming so good list thank you what do you think dad all right um i 100 percent agree with you i mentioned it before blizzard of oz goodbye to romance and i think that that song was they i've heard it said that it's him saying goodbye to black sabbath um, I do like the keyboard part of the yeah, it's just the song itself is just not good Boston let me take you home tonight and when you when he said Boston I pulled it up and I said it's gonna be that song didn't I and and I and I looked at that too and I was gonna put that down but um it's not enough for me to yeah actually I, have that on a list and I'm gonna be honest like it was I was really struggling because I'm like there's not a lot of albums that I would call perfect albums, in my estimate. That just one song ruins it. Yeah, that just one song ruins yeah, it. So I was right, just like, yeah. uh, that one I guess I could yeah. I could throw a stone at. <laughs> yeah. And the ghost, the the uh, darkness at, at the heart of my love. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of that one either. Um, that is a fantastic album, though. Kiss Sonic Boom Stan, I could not agree more. I, I just, it's fucking terrible. Um <laughs> I'll take I'll take Dangerous on a fucking loop over. I'll take that stand just once any day. Yeah, the nothing but a good time uh, versus. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I I don't get that out of that. I don't know. I just don't. Um, <laughs> Ice Nine Kills Freak Flag. That's one of the songs I didn't like when we did that album. Yeah. And um, Green Day, whatever her, What's name, her name. What's her name? I I loved that album when we did it. Yeah. When you did it as a birthday album, I think. But I don't remember that song. So yeah. Pretty forgettable for me. It's yeah. forgettable, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like, what's her name? It's forgettable. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, what's, uh, yeah, I can't you're, think of what the fuck it is. You're going up against, like, St. Jimmy, uh, Jesus of yeah. Suburbia. That St. Jimmy was great. I, that one in the Jesus of Suburbia, I freaking love that one. That was great. I gotta, gotta put that on again. So, all right, so there's there's Dylan's and mine on the second half of the show here. So, uh, real quick, we'll we'll get to the wrap-up portion here. So, what we'll do is we'll, we'll say our goodbyes and... Um, and guys, give me, I don't know, three or four or five or whatever you think albums that you think are perfect albums. Give me 12. Give me 12, Johnny. Give me 12. <laughs> and um, and if you know if someone wants to comment on someone else's, that, that's that's not a, a, an issue either. Well, let's actually, let's do our perfect albums, then we'll wrap up. So, Sounds good. Um, Dylan, give me your perfect albums. My perfect albums, the three that I picked, and again, this was very difficult for me. Uh, I don't consider too many albums to be front to back perfect, uh, but the three that I picked... For this episode, at least, and I might change my mind later on. I picked Apu Khan from Cheap Trick, partially because I was listening to it, and I, I was just like, oh, there's no skippers on this album. Uh, Number of the Beast from Iron Maiden. I don't think that there's any skippers on that album, unlike Peace of Mind, which <laughs> has <laughs> Quest for Fire on there. Wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> one album that absolutely, in my mind, is a perfect album, uh, because I, I care about this album so much, is The Black Parade from My Chemical Romance. I think that front to back, that album is just a, a perfect masterpiece that hit hits me every single time. You could argue that teenagers might bring it out a little bit, but I think the placement of it saves it because it, it's kind of like a, a digestive, like right before the, the emotional impact of the, cl- of like, um, you know, um, oh, what's the last track called? Um, the famous last words. I think that that that's just like the perfect way to kind of ease you ease the pain up a little bit and then hit you home at the end. So, yeah, Black Parade is is so good. Okay, Brad, what do you got? If you got any comments yeah, on Dylan's, so, go ahead and yeah, mention yours. Yeah, it uh, again. This was this was hard to you know. It's hard to do. I mean, again, the the theme of this ep- this episode was was great, and I, I challenge people to try to come, <laughs> come up with albums that are perfect, except for one song. It's not as it's not as easy as you as you think it is. But I I decided to kind of stick to the theme of my podcast, and I went to some of my early the early concerts that I, that I went to. Cause what did you do, Steve, when you were going to go to a show back in the day, you listened the shit out you, of the album that they were supporting, them. at least, right. That you just binged on it. Yep. So white snake 87, you know, a lot of people go to, go to slide it in. And I, I think they do that because of the fatigue with the 87 album, but li- put that 87 album on and, and listen to it from, from top to bottom. It's, it's awesome. Then I saw, so the first time I saw Maiden was on seventh son and 
only eight tracks on there, and I, I know there's one that you absolutely hate, Steve, but I, I absolutely love that album, and a bunch of our, our group, we, we just absolutely love that album, so I, I would throw that on there. And then to the chagrin of your uh, the guy that comes on to talk Rush with you, I, I saw Rush on the Presto Tour and listened to the the hell out of that album before going to that show. And I, I know I know Kevin Williams, if you're out there, Kevin Williams loves that album because that was the first time he saw him too. So he's he's at le- least with me. But I, I think that album is is perfect from from top to bottom as well. Some so some oddball choices there maybe, but you know they tie into my my concert history and some of the early shows I went to uh, when I was younger. So there you go. All right. Uh, for me, I have a, I have a couple. Um, I have like a dual one as well. I think the self-titled original Wasp album is absolutely perfect. There is absolutely nothing on there I will ever skip. It's just such a... I mean, they do still do a lot of stuff. Uh, I'll do quotations live. Um, but like the deep tracks, like The Torture Never Stops, and you know tracks like that, like B.A.D., School Days, just absolutely stellar album front to back. I'm going to go with... Um, I'm gonna go with two Kicks albums. I think Mid- I think Midnight Dynamite and Blow My Fuse are perfect albums. There is nothing on those two albums that I skip. And I actually, um, Stephen and I were talking about it on talking about Kicks on the Cruise because I think he had a Kick shirt on the one day. And um, they did the uh, they remastered or re whatever them those two albums. I, I didn't hear the Midnight Dynamite version, but I went back and. The Blow My Fuse version is available on Apple Music, and it's like the difference is fantastic. But there's nothing I skip on those. And I'm gonna say, um, I think in my in my listening, I think there's only one perfect Kiss album. I went through the catalog, um, one possibly two, but I'm gonna give you the one. I'll tell you what the other one possibly one is for me. Um, no. Um, Rock and Roll Over. I, I think Rock and Roll Over is one of the albums that I don't skip anything. I don't even skip Hard Luck Woman. And um, there's a couple ones that are a little lesser, like See You In Your Dreams is like kind of not not the greatest, but it's not a skipper for me. And um, the next one that comes close, I think, is the Kiss the debut Kiss album. I don't even I don't mind Love Theme from Kiss. I don't mind uh, actually. In fact, I love Kiss in Time. So there there's the ones for me. Uh, we'll go around. We'll wrap up. If you want to comment on someone's perfect albums while you're wrapping up, feel free to do so, and we'll get the hell out of here. Dylan. Yeah, thank you, Brad, for coming on to the podcast. It's always a pleasure having you on. Uh, I loved everybody's picks for songs that they would excise from an album. I think it's really interesting, and it really kind of showcases what uh, your tastes are for that particular band or that particular album. And unfortunately, you can listen to all of them on our Spotify playlist of the week and let us know if you agree or disagree whether or not those albums should be removed from, you know, those songs should be removed from those albums or if you think they're perfect albums. And I think it would be awesome if if our listeners, if they had any perfect albums that are ruined by one song, throw out your picks because I'm very interested to hear all uh, all the variety that, that's out there because we didn't have a lot of crossover, even being kind of a blind episode we did not have a lot of uh i think we only had technically two because you had one but had changed it correct yeah well i just didn't i yeah. had a, it was a spare okay yeah so we only had two full like one-to-one album and artist crossover so that that's really cool to showcase how many perf- almost perfect albums there are out there that we could list off all these different ones and i'm sure we could do multiple episodes uh, in the future yeah, and actually, I, I I did forget to mention BC's and BB's perfect albums they gave me. BC gave me Rat Out of the Cellar, Tora Tora Surprise Attack, and Tesla Mechanical Resonance. BB gave me Kick Axe Vices, which I had as a as a, a spare on mine as well. Van Halen 1984 and Def Leppard Pyromania, but I think he spelled Hysteria wrong. <laughs> when he said pyromania, so that's what he's got there. That's what those guys have. So, uh, Brad, wrap it up, my friend. Give Slamfest a good, good, uh, good shot there. 
Yeah, thank you again for having me on and, and thinking of me. This is this was again a, an interesting uh, concept, and I enjoyed. Uh, it's harder than you think for sure, but uh, enjoyed uh, diving into some albums uh, like this and, and coming up with with a list. And yeah, Slam Fest we uh, we drop every Thursday most of the time. Sometimes carries over to Friday, uh, depending specifically if I see a show or schedules schedules get in the way sometimes as as well and I've, I've had all the potter than hell guys on and and before we hit record i was talking to dylan you guys are going to hear dylan on a subsequent uh episode so so look uh look for that here uh towards the end of the year but uh, always enjoy coming on with you guys missed uh, bb and bc but i'm sure uh Sure, I'll see him on a, a, a subsequent episode uh, in the future. So thanks again, Steve and Dylan. All right. Yeah, once again, um, Dylan, great job for everything you do. Awesome. Brad, thank you for coming on, spending time with us. And we're actually recording two hours later than we usually record because I had to, to work an extra shift today. And Brad, thank you for um, rolling with the punches for us for recording later than, than we're used to. And I appreciate it. And guys, check out Slam Fest podcast if you have not. It is uh, it, it's fun, and I, I can't wait to hear what what they uh, what Dylan has coming up with Brad as well. I've been on several times. It's fun. BC and BB have also been on. Always a blast. And and what I like about Brad's podcast is my favorite part about music is talking about live music. Just like being, you know. Like I said, I love studio albums, but I, I, I'm in it for the live stuff. I want to see bands live. I have a, an unquenchable thirst for live music, and Brad brings that to you every week. And uh, it's a it's a fun podcast, and and uh, and Brad has you know he sees everybody that we see, so it just gives us an extra opportunity to talk about the shit that we love as well with Brad. Not even on our podcast, but on his as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I thought this was a fun one to do. And and when I come up with the idea, I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy. You know, I'm going to be able to just bang, 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 bang. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like going through, no, no. There's like two songs on that album that I don't like. There's three that I'll skip on this one. I'm like, shit, like this was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I thought I was just going to be able to bang them right out. But I wasn't able to do that. And it's uh, and it's and it's even tough to, to pick out a perfect album as well just to... Um, you know, if you have that one song that ruins or the other song that you're kind of, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. So if you guys want to give us a couple of yours, we'll read them out on the air, on the, on the show when you guys send them in. And, um, Dylan, once again, thank you for all you do. Brad, thanks for coming on again. And, um, we have some cool stuff coming up. A couple, uh, a couple returning guests, uh, one, uh, a couple weeks. I think we have two different guests in the next two weeks as well. I'm hoping to get the, uh. The Killer Bees, BC and BB, all of us back in with just a podcast with just the four of us. I hope we can do that at, at some time soon. With like I said, with our our work schedule, we're we're short a guy, so it's kind of crazy to get us all together. We're gonna have to start recording at the station. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to hear, uh, you know, someone getting toned out uh, three towns down for someone with a, a sore toe, then we can absolutely do that. Little Easter eggs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, guys, thank you for listening. Thanks for interacting with us. And, um, you know, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We will see you next time, and there definitely will be a next time. <laughs>